Okay, well, welcome everyone. I'm Diane Monig. I'm the Transition Manager at the ARC of Northern Virginia, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Getting Around Transportation Options with WMATA. We're so happy to have Janae Acasio with us to present today, and she is a Metro System Orientation Specialist with the Washington Metro Transit Authority. So just a few logistics for today. All of the participants are muted, so please feel free to type your questions into the chat box or to the Q&A, that either one is fine. Um, and we will get to the questions either periodically throughout the presentations, we'll stop and take questions, or we'll wait until the end. And then this presentation is being recorded, and the recording along with the slides will be sent to you probably not until Monday, um, because the person who uploads our uh, videos to YouTube is not here this week. So probably early next week, we'll get that out to you. Um, and with that, let's get started. So Janae, thank you so much for being with us today. This is super information. And before COVID, Janae used to come to the ARC of Northern Virginia a couple of times a year to help people fill out applications. So hopefully when COVID is over, and life gets a little more back to normal, we can host those really helpful events again. So let me um, share my screen and we'll get started. Good morning, everyone. This is Janae. I do work with Metro as a system orientation specialist. We find this presentation useful. Um, it is some good information, some updated information about the system. Um, that I would like to share. So I'm going to first start with, if you can go to the next slide. Metro services and resources for people with disabilities. Um, currently Metro has not returned to in-person training. However, we can work with individuals online. In addition, Fairfax County has started a travel training program for people with disabilities and senior citizens. Cynthia Allen is a mobility manager with the Fairfax Human Services, Transportation, Neighborhood and Community Services. You can contact her at 703-324-7055 or 571-474-6518. Six five one eight for additional information. Also, um, I want you to know the resources that we have is travel training. We do do travel training post pan, um, post COVID um, and pre COVID. We do travel training. We do it on groups or we do it on one on one. We provide trip planning assistance. So if you went to the metro, we would show you on the metro website how we um, plan a trip, how much it will cost, and other important information, including safety, um, what to have in case of emergency, and a host of other information. We provide large print um, metro pocket guides um, as a resource, and we have a brochure that is tips for people um, with disabilities and senior citizens when riding metro. So those are some of the resources and services that we do offer. Next slide, please. Metro programs for people with disability, we have two programs. Um, one program is Metro Access, which is a service that provides door-to-door shared transportation for people with disabilities who are unable to ride fixed um, route transportation, bus and rail for some or all of their trips. Then we have the reduced fare program. With the reduced fare program, you pay half of the peak of bus and rail um, at all times. We have the senior citizens program. It's a senior citizen smart trip card. And we also travel train citizens, citizens in the DMV area. And um, the reduced fare is for people with disabilities. And it provides a discount fare on metro systems and many other transit agencies within the DMV. Next slide, please. My coworker who generally um, presents to Metro Access could not be with us today. I am going to still touch on the information that she shared with me. Um, and I will try to answer any questions you have. And if I can't answer, 
we will um, get back in touch with you to answer any questions that may not have been answered. But um, as I stated before, Metro Access is a door-to-door -door transportation service. This, um, you have to schedule your trips in advance and you have to cancel if the trip is not required. If not, they will um, have you as a no-show, which is a penalty. But Metro Access Paratransit Service provides door-to-door -door shared by transportation for people with disabilities, as I said, who aren't able to take bus and rail um, for some or all of their trips. The Metro Access riders must reserve rides at least one day in advance before their planned trip and up to one week in advance for subscription trips and um, possibly repeated pattern trips. Next slide, please. Metro service area pickup limited is to three fourths of a mile outside of the metro service area. So if you live three fourths outside of an area that we service, say for instance, I live in Prince William County, it doesn't come to my area. But if I lived in a Fairfax County, it would, um, but anything three-fourths out of what the Fairfax connector um, travels or with Metro bus or Metro rail travels, if it's anything that's three-fourths um, outside of that area, um, Metro would not, um, uh, Metro access would not pick you up. You can still apply, but the trip must begin and end from an address within the service area as I had just described previously. Next slide. So this is the first page of the Metro application. I just wanted everyone to get a look at it. Um, currently, we are um, doing the presentation. We, we aren't doing in-person um, interviews, but let me go ahead and just talk a little bit about the application. So part A is, completed by the applicant or a parent or guardian. Part B must com be completed by a healthcare professional whose specialty matches the applicant's diagnosis. For instance, a school psychologist cannot provide a signature for a physical disability. The exception here is that the application primary healthcare provider, pediatrician or primary care provision physician who knows the overall health of the applicant and how the condition conditions affect the patient's functioning can sign the application. Our application provides instruction. However, there are changes. So the following is important. In pre-COVID times, the, applic the applicant would set up an appointment for an in-person interview in our office. Um, now we are doing things online. So please submit a legible and complete packet, envelope, or e email, all documents, including a picture, headshot. Please have the headshot, and it can be a selfie if, if required. Please have the headshot with a plain background, um, and because this is a photo ID. Um, and you also need to include a copy of a government-issued ID. Um, if it's a student, a student ID will work. Next slide, please. So for right now, in-person interviews, as I was stating earlier, is suspended. There are different options now that we can use. So our application um, for now, no, no person interviews are stated, and our application process is being handled remotely by phone, when needed, and um, submission of phones by, I mean, of the applications by US mail or by Metro email. To be quite honest with you, if you can submit it via email, that is your best option. Um, and they are accepting, before they used to say you couldn't have it scanned or copied, but right now, since we aren't taking in person um, applications or interviews, you can now scan and attach the email, or you can copy it and send it to you through the US mail. But once again, I'm stressing, if you can, please email it, especially because our office is getting ready to move to Lafont Plaza. 
So it really, I want to believe on the stress again to try to try to email to eligibility at wna.com. Once again, it's eligibility at wmata.com. When you send it, once again, you send the application, make sure that it's fully completed, sign, make sure they add the ICD codes. A lot of times we see things where the doctors aren't completing the application and we have to turn it away. So please make sure that is completed before you leave that doctor's office. Make sure he crossed those T's, he or she crossed those T's and dot those I's. Once again, we need a photo of the applicant, headshot, plain gray background. You can do it by phone, that's fine, and send a picture in. They also want a government ID. If you don't have a license, non driver's license, a card, passport, green card, you can use a student ID if you are a student. Please label the item, okay? So when we submit it, make sure that you, because sometimes people send stuff in separately, um, just make sure that you kind of give the information of um, who the person is, in, um, the name, put the name with the photo, um, because I get that a lot. People who send an application in, they don't send the other information in. Then when they send it, I have to email them, oh, can you please tell me who you are so I can put everything in the file. So if you can do that um, when you send them in, the it would be so very helpful. Next slide. So as I said, I'm not generally the person who would talk to you about um, the Metro Access, but I do want to tell you two things. You can contact Bridget Doherty. Her phone number is 202-570-2447, okay? You can call the office at 202-962-2700. Just hit option five, because if you hit option five, um, you get a person quicker. As far as group, because we do have a, a person who handles groups, that would still be Wanda, Wanda Elliott. She would handle all of the group um, input or, or application. So if you have a group, um, please just continue to send it to uh, Wanda Elliott. Um, it's W Elliott at wamava.com and she will handle group um, applications for Metro Access. Excuse me, I see I have a couple of questions. Um, can, do you want us to go ahead and? Yes, if you could, that's good. So let me go through those. Um, okay. So we have one person here that says they were told the only way to, uh, wait, I'm having a problem with my computer. We were told the only way to submit the application is to take it down to the DC office in person only. Is that no. still a requirement? No, right now you can, but the office technically is not open. You can email that application to eligibility at WMA.com. Okay. So when you take and you submit it that way, um, you can also ask them, because if she's expired, you can ask them for an extension. The extension would only be for paratransit. So if she um, or he has the car where it allows them to ride bus and rail, that would not occur right now. Um, they would, if they need it, if they expire, need an extension, they would give them the um, Metro Access um, paratransit service only. Okay. And Janae, there's a question about where you can find the application. Um, you can go online um, into our Metro website. I, let me go look real quick for you. Um, yeah, we can send that link out as an email with the slides, the direct um, email to the application. Right. I appreciate that. And then is it is that true? Oh, you were talking about the app, like the, that you can apply via email. Is that the same for the discounted fare application? Yes, it is. And we'll do that when we talk about the reduced fare application. 
Okay, and let me give me one so second and let me go. I also, the... I also see that someone said that their daughter's card expired in October. Yes, so yeah, that's the other one. My daughter's Metro Access ID card expired October 2021. Do we have to redo the entire process? Yes, ma'am. Even if your daughter card didn't expire, when the card does, even prior to it expiring, you have to get recertified, which means that you have to do the um, entire process over. Janae, I have one other question. If you know it's gonna, how soon before it expires, can you start the process again or should you? Um, you should start the process. You should at least give it um, two months. That way you can take and you can submit it and, and um, they can, because um, they require, they are allowed 20 days to say yay or nay. So 20 days to process. So the sooner, you know, the, the, for the reduced fare, it's um, 30 days. For Metro Access, I believe it's 60 days. So you can do it in advance. And that way um, you have that, that buffer in there too for those 20 days. Thank you, Janae. Okay, I don't, let me look in the chat. I don't think there's any additional questions. Um, so you can get started. I, you can go on with the presentation. Okay, so um, let me X that out. So you can go to the next slide. So now we're gonna talk about the reduced fare program for people with disabilities. Um, that's my, me with short hair. <laughs> so people with disabilities get to ride Metro bus and rail um, at a discounted fare. The benefits is cost effective. So because you never pay the full, you never pay the full fare. It's always half of the peak fare on Metro rail, Metro bus, as well as um, other transit agencies that partner with us. It's also a transfer discount. So say for instance, when you get on the bus and you go to the train, they give an additional discount um, on a train and from train to bus, they give a transfer discount. For any individuals who drive, there is no discount for parking, but you must use the same card as you did when you um, rode public trans, when you, um, I'm sorry, you have to use the same card when you exit, otherwise it's gonna charge you a non-riders fee, which instead of paying $4.95 to exit the system, you'll wind up paying um, like eight to nine dollars. So keep that in mind for any drivers, okay? Can we go to the next slide? So this is the application, and I want to talk to you about applying for the Reduced Fare Smart Trip. The Metro Reduced Fare um, Program, we are accepting applications via email. If you can send them directly to me, that would be great. My email is G-I-O-C-A-S-I-O -S -S -I at WMATA. When submitting the application for the first, um, first time participant, please submit a headshot and a JP. Um, JPG format, just as you would for the mental access one. Um, a selfie is fine. A copy of a government photo ID as proof of identity. If, if it's a student, a student ID card will work. Um, we will review your application. If you qualify, um, a smart trip card will be mailed to, um, to the address that you submit on the application. If the person does not qualify or meet the uh, criteria, uh, the denial letter explaining why you didn't qualify will be emailed to you. If there's an error, and um, a lot of times instead of just emailing or calling, I mean, instead of trying to do mail because it takes long, a lot of times I will call the person or I and or email. I do both if there's a problem with the application. So that way we can um, fix it a little bit quicker than um, waiting for the mail process. If the person um, that's applying for this require PCA, you must have a doctor to sign it, a doctor, a nurse practitioner, whoever's listed on the application. Um, 
they must, and the school psychologist accepted for this, um, for this application, um, they must say that the person requires a PCA, okay? Right now, we still are located at 600 Fifth Street. Um, if you require the card right away, you don't have to wait. You can come to our office um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 to 4. You don't need an appointment. And also um, on Tuesday, we close at 2. So from 8 to 2 on Tuesday. Appointments aren't required for the reduced fare program. But keep in mind that we will be moving. I'm not sure it's been delayed. Um, I'm not sure when that date is, but please just check our website or call us at 202-962-2700 um, for updated information. Next slide. Renee, can I just clarify something real quick? Mm -hmm. So for the Metro, um, for the reduced fare smart trip card, you still need to come into the office. You don't have to. You can oh, you do don't have to. Okay. No, you can do it online. You can. Well, Okay. And you can do it. You can email it to me. Did you? Okay. So, so either one, Metro Access or Reduced Fare. Everything. No. Let me get. It, let me show. Metro, okay. Metro Access. You send that application to eligibility. You can fax it at the fax number that's listed um, on the application. You can mail it, but you may do the move. So, and mail is unpredictable. And you can email it. We have those three choices. Right now, I'm letting you know that email is the quickest way. Okay. okay? And that way also, it, but if you do decide to mail it, please keep yourself a, a copy. A lot of times people mail things to us, they're not keeping a copy. And if it gets lost, we don't have any information to say, hey, we got your application. So if you do mail it, which is not the best way to go, um, keep the applicant, keep a um, copy, okay? But you can email it to eligibility at Wombata, the Metro Access, you can fax it on the number that's listed on the application, or you can mail it, okay? okay. thank for the you. Reduce, for the reduced fare, you can email it to me. Um, you can fax it, but, I, and you can, you can fax it to me, um, at that same phone number that's on the uh, Metro Access application. But I would advise you as far as the picture, because I will need a picture for first timers, or if the student or the person or the customer had the card when they was 12 and now they 17 because the card's expired, we do require a dated picture, okay? So you can take and you can send the picture actually to my cell phone or my email. Okay, and I will share that um, my cell phone number with you, which is 202-236-5867. And even if you're unable to email, if you can take pictures of the application and any of the documentation for the reduced fare program, I'll accept that too um, via text message. Okay. okay, thank well, many ways to connect. Let me ask one other question someone had. Um, we have this is the one about the expired um card she says they still have money on her account will it remain will the money remain on the account until the reapplication process is completed yes when your smart your card expires the money um when you take and you renew the money is transferred over we do not retain the money some of, the, some of my customers have smart benefits we it's like having two separate banks with smart benefits um, we aren't allowed to touch that bank. You would go online and, um, and when you go online, because you have an account online, um, you would go in and you would, ex you would change the card number. And that way your benefits would be transferred to that new card. Another thing that's important right now, and I'm not sure if I have it um, in the presentation later, but any cards that's in the back, that doesn't read 0167. If it starts with 0020, or um, some people even have cards that's even older than that, they will no longer work. For the reduced fare program, you have to um, contact, you have to um, send us the information. Um, so, but honestly, if it starts with 0020, that means that your card expired already. 
but um, the smart care cards continue to work, but they won't now. So if anything that has 0020, please, you need to reapply, not really reapply, unless you expire. If you expire, you need to reapply. Otherwise, you need to um, have the cards exchanged. Some people haven't, and um, they email me the application if they're not expired, and then I send them a new card and the money transfer over. But keep in mind, I cannot transfer smart benefits. That's something that you have to do, or the organization that um, the customer works with can also help with doing that. Did I have any other questions? Okay. No, that's it. Okay, so the online process right now for um, people with disabilities, the reduced fair ID card, first time applicants, you must submit the application, the certification. So the certification can be a, a disabled veteran. And I know that this is a that group I still like to and share because you may know a disabled veteran, 60% or greater disability that will qualify and you can share that information to them about the program. If, a, if the person is a Medicare card holder, um, a, a person who's deaf or hard of hearing can provide a, um, an audiogram. So those documents, the VA letter, Medicare card, and audiogram is automatic qualifications. They don't need any signatures besides the applicant signature saying that they apply for the, um, for the program. If they don't have those three things that allow them to automatically qualify, then they will need a medical professional to um, sign it. Keep in mind, if it's a student, a school psychologist can sign. Metro says, well, we really only want them to sign for cognitive. I'm user friendly. So um, if, because the, the school psychologist and those teachers are right there and they know the disabilities, okay? So um, in regards to the renewals, previous cardholders, you don't have to resubmit the, um, submit the, um, submit a photo IDs unless, you know, there's a big transition in, in your appearance, okay? But you do have to put in submit page two um, of the reduced fare application. Um, and if you don't have those three things that I mentioned before, you do have to um, have a medical professional sign it. Okay. Next page. So what's important then about replacing the loss of stolen card, um, is that a lot of times people say, well, I lost my card. I lost it a couple of weeks ago. Someone could be using your card. So um, if you know for sure that your card is lost, please have it canceled. Um, so that way, when we go to transfer funds to your new card, um, that, that the money can be transferred over and someone hasn't used, used it. Right now, we have not, Right now, we waive the fees for lost cards, lost cards, but when it returns, it's $10 for the first, um, first loss, $25 for any additional loss. But um, a police report will cancel um, the fee. So it will waive the fee if you have, um, if you give us that. Also, um, as I told you, when you cancel the um, smart trip card, if you find it, it cannot be reactivated. So if you report it that it was lost, stolen, and um, to smart trip, then when you come to our office, or you call us and ask us for a replacement, um, or so because sometimes people say, "Well, I found my card," we cannot reactivate that card once it's canceled. It's canceled. Another thing that I always advise is that with the reduced fare program. Even if you, you know, have the Metro Access card where you can ride bus and rail, um, I always advise to keep a backup card. Um, it, it's going to be a full fare card because you can only have one reduced fare card, one Metro Access card. Keep a backup card so if it if it, if it is lost or stolen, 
you can come to our office if you need it right away, um, if you need it right away for use. So that way you can have a card, you can ride transportation, get your new card, and then start using the replacement card. Was that understandable? Yes, Janae, we just, yes, that was very clear. Can I just, we have two quick questions related. How often do you have to reapply for both Metro Access and the reduced fare card? So for the, um, for, for the most part, the um, reduced fare is five years. Sometimes they don't give it for five years based on a disability. Some disabilities are temporary. If it's not like a Medicare card holder, a person who's deaf or hard of hearing, a person with autism, Asperger's, those are going to be five-year cards, okay? And is that the same for Metro Access as well? Metro Access depends on the service. So if you are only a paratransit rider, it's a five years. If you have, I believe they call it um, un um, conditional, where you have the actual smart trip card, mm -hmm. three-year card. And then one other question regarding the application. Um, what is the number of days between, like if the doctor signs the um, application, how long, how long is that application? How long is his signature good for on the application until you submit it? Um, let me see, I believe it's, I believe it's 20, 20 days, I believe. It says it on the application. Oh, okay. okay. We can point that out when we're doing right. a follow-up email. Okay. Right, and then also you have, um, you can reapply 60 days in advance. So you don't have to wait for it to expire. But if, if you do that, when you are, um, if you reapply or say for instance, by mail, my card is going to expire in, in a week. Once we um, take, get that application to renew the card, once we program that card, if your card doesn't expire for another five days, if we have that application and we process it, your, the current card that you have, even though it's not ex expired, will not work because we transferred all the information to the new card. Get it? So say for instance, Card um, expires um, the 21st. You submitted me the application I got it today, the day is the 10th. I took and I did the paperwork, I did the smart trip card, and I tapped it on my computer for the, for the transfer of information. So all your information is transferred with that new card. I put that card in the mail, but you don't get it till um, March 21st. If you try to use that your card on March 20th, it will not work. Okay, understood? Yes, yes. If, any, okay. if anybody has any questions around that, feel free to type that into the chat box uh, or the q and I have one other question. Can you apply for both Metro Access and the reduced fare card? No, no, you one or the other. And if you are able to honestly ride bus and rail, um, but some days you is bad days, and that's how I describe it. Some days you have bad days, you need paratransit. Other days are good days, and you can take bus and rail. Um, if that's the case, when you apply, you let them know, and the doctor has to let them know, and they'll give you a service where you can have, where you don't have to have both cars. You can use um, your metro access card for paratransit, metro bus, and metro rail. So that's it for the two applications, but I want to give you some information about Metro Excel and know before you go. Um, if you go to the trip, this is um, the link, schedules and maps, Wamada at Wamada.com. And if you can, if you have a smartphone, if you make Wamada.com, um, put it on your home page. You have access to um, to the trip planner and to a lot of other information you need while traveling. Um, Google Maps is also helpful, and I know that the ARC has a program that's helpful too with travel training or traveling or metro. 
So if you can um, take and click the link, schedule the maps for me. Okay, just give me one second because I need to okay. switch out that screen. That's fine. One second. Everybody ready for spring? I know I am. <laughs> it's your name. I'm having a hard time switching uh, screens for the other slideshow. Uh, to link to the um, website. Okay. Let's see. Oh, let me see if I can just click on this. Okay. Um, uh, let me see if I can do it straight from here. Sorry, everyone, we're having all technical. Let's see. No, it won't let me. I'm sorry, Janae, I can't get it to share. Okay, let me see what I can do. Do you wanna try and pull it up on yours? I'll stop sharing Please. on mine. Okay. It's not that me, it's not that me, um, it's not that me. Um, Renee, there's one other question here about if someone needs someone with them in order to use Metro Transit, like a personal care attendant, does that person get a discounted card also? Yes, that's, that's where the PCA comes in from. So when the medical professional for the reduced fare program, whether it's a school psychologist, medical professional, when they put down um, that that person needs someone to travel with them sometimes or all, the, or all times, um, they click that and when they um, get the ID card, they will get a PCA card. The PCA card will not have, um, like, this, like the um, customer's card, it will not have their picture because it's not limited to that one PCA. I may have my mother travel with me one day as a PCA, and it may be my brother traveling with me another day as a PCA. So that PCA card travels with that um, individual. Keep in mind that when you are a PCA and you use the um, transit system, you have to allow um, the customer who has the smart trip card, you have to allow them to tap first and then automatically right behind that person, you would um, tap your card. If someone comes in between, because sometimes people will try to be nice and um, allow people to um, get in between them and, and the, um, reduce their smart trip card and a metro card um, hold, if you allow that to happen, you will be charged a full fair um, fee. So you have to tap the card right after um, the customer with the, reduce, with the metro access on the reduced fair card, okay? And if you do allow someone to come between you and you pay that full fare, Metro will not um, refund any monies. Okay. okay. Let me see if I can try one more time with the oh with the website. And if not, we'll just have to continue with the um, with the 
Yeah, I don't know why. But maybe, can, can you at least, can you go to the internet? Yeah, that so, is what I'm having a problem with. Okay, yeah. It's not okay. letting me. Yeah, and it's not letting me um, get to your screen. It says that I'm disabled from, um, from connecting. I don't know why that is not working. Um, oh. There's technology for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. Okay, can you see that? Yep, I can see that. Okay. Is this this the website you wanted? Um, that's the next one, but that's fine. Oh, which is the, I have this one. There's a one before, yeah. This okay. one? Let me see. Nope, nope, hold on, hold on. Nope, that's not it either. Uh, so, is this, I have one other one. Okay, so go to schedule the maps. Mm -mm, go. Mm. Just, let's just do, do, okay. Let's just do. Um, oh, schedules and maps right here. Yeah, okay. So if you can click on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I just wanted you all to see that this right here is schedule and maps. Um, provides a lot of information, and like I said, if you take and you put a model on your on your homepage for your phone, um, if you put a model on your homepage on your phone, you'll be able to just pull this up really quickly. So with this right here, you see it shows you the trip planner. With the trip planner, it gives you direction time. Tables. Um, it gives you timetables for the bus and the rail. It gives you the maps for the metro bus to rail. It tells you the next arrivals, and it tells you about service nearby. Um, it gives you rail delays. So um, if you, there was a delay, you would know in it, even before. Um, if the elevator outage, um, you would be able to um, contact Metro that to know that you need um, use of an elevator at a particular station. And that way they would have the shuttle available for you. But there's also a trip for any, uh, a trip for any wheelchair users that um, to go to the next station, if it's um, hopefully a uh, platform in the middle that you can just cross over. If you were um, trying to exit at the station with a bit platform and go back to the station. That's so, that's um, really quick. Um, and even if you're not a wheelchair user, if you just have trouble with um, using the escalator, um, because some people do have a fear of escalators, then that's also an option for you too if you need the elevator. Um, you could also be um, uh, um, using a, a walk for any of those reasons. That could be the best way for you to get back to the station without waiting for the shuttle service. Um, this also lets you know um, the bus routes, and it also gives next bus information. Um, if we click on, like, if you, can you click on trip, click, um, trip planner for me and double click it? You see, it lets you know from and to, and it also gives you more options. You may not be able to walk a long distance, and without, um, you might be able to only walk, you know, a couple blocks. So if you put those options in there, it can be the best way to travel. So it, can you go back to, um, can you go backwards? Because I want to show timetables. If you look at timetables, it shows you the best schedule. And if you look, this already telling you there's issues, okay? And this is important, especially um, you can put a route number down, um, where you want to go, your destination. And this is really important because if you have a child who uses um, public transportation and there's a delay, they can kind of say, hey, mom, dad, there's a delay um, and because they have this information, okay? And it's the same thing for real. It shows you any delays, okay? We can go back and we can look at maps. Just shows you um, bus and rail maps. 
and then it actually shows you um, if you go to the rail system, it actually shows you um, the color lines and, and, so, and also it can show you where the train actually is, okay? So this just, I wanted to give you a little taste of that and with under our schedules and maps, if, if that would be interesting to you. There are other um, links that you can look at at your own convenience. So can we go to the next slide? So let me. And the next slide is going to actually be the station view. This is something that Metro just started. So station view, if you can, um, so right now you see in the, we call it a pie line. The pie line shows you the yellow and that the yellow and green line are at the Metro, um, the Mount Vernon um, Convention Center location. If you're not sure, you can always ask a Metro employee about the station that they're working at. They can tell you what bus lines, they can tell you what restaurants are upstairs and a lot of other information that you just wouldn't think that they would know. Um, but the brown pole on the outside is, um, it gives you the information, it's in braille and um, it's the white lettering is um, for those with no vision so they can um, be able to see the, um, the, the signage. But if you can, do you think you can link on, go back for a second? You think you can get that, go back to that um, internet site that you was at so I can show them the station view? This, oh, is, sure. this is something new that Metro has started. Um, with this, it actually shows you um, the station itself. It's, um, this is a good training tool because it can show you, um, that's it right there. Mm -hmm. So pick a station, just pick anyone that you would be interested in. Okay, so then if you, can you make it the full screen? Okay, so it shows you parking, okay? Um, it shows you about bikes. It still gives you information about um, the station status. We don't have any outages. It still allows you to go to trip planner and um, it also allows you to, um, can you make this, can you make it um, a full screen for me? Up top and where the box is, go all the way up. Go all the right. Not the map. Let's okay. So, okay. So, with the station, I'm sorry about this. So, when you take in she hit Addison Road, okay, you can see um, it gives you information. They're telling you that there's um, parking prevention and because they're doing maintenance. Um, it gives you directions to the station that allows you to plan a trip, but I want you to keep going straight down till you see station, um, station view, go all the way down, keep going, scrolling down. So get out of the map section, go back for me. Okay, keep scrolling down. Okay, see station, um, station view, can you go to station view? So when you go to station view, you see where it says blue um, view on Google Maps. This is already showing you, do you see in the blue? Okay, so this is showing you the actual station. So in here, you can see the cameras on top, which is a security measure. You can see the pylons, what we call, and it shows you the names. Um, those are the poles. It shows you the name of the station. Um, it will show you if you, um, if you can take and follow the arrow for me, please. This way, 
the view of, of um, you can see the bumpy domes, um, which is by the platform edge. The things up top with, with this orange letter um, in red, that tells you the actual times that the trains will arrive and the color of the train. This station um, has only has the um, blue line. So it's only going to show you um, for the blue. But if it had multiple, uh, multiple colors, then it would tell you the arrival time of those multiple trains. Um, so this is a good um, tool. So if you wanted to see the station before you um, arrive there, it would even take you upstairs to um, the station manager as well as to the machinery to let you have an idea if you want to use this as, as a training tool. I just think it was it's a really interesting um, piece of um, information that Metro has um, included onto their website. Okay. okay. So we can go to the next slide. Janae, there were a couple of questions. Okay. Um, let me pull those up. Um, the Metro, oh, this is the Metro website reduced fare instructions, instruction sheet online needs to mm -hmm. be updated. It still okay. says that the application form, uh, that it doesn't accept by mail or fax. And right, so. It would be helpful if that was corrected. Right, but I'm not sure if it's going to something that I will bring that up management, but I'm not sure that once we uh, post pandemic or when, 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 when we return to the office, if they are going to continue to allow us to do it online, especially uh, Metro Access, since they have to do in-person interviews. So I'm not sure if that's why they haven't changed it, but I will ask them, OK? OK, thank you. Also, um, if you do not necessarily, um, if you have a full fare card, and it does, and it starts with 0020 or any card that doesn't start with 0167, you need to go trade it in and you can do it at Metro Center. Right now, they are open from eight to three, Monday through Friday. Prior, their hours were really limited, but right now, because of the card exchange, they open Monday through Friday from eight to um, three. But that's all, that's, that doesn't include reduced fare. You can only do that through our office, okay? And one other question, are there storage measures for ambulation devices on Metro, like a rollator? Um, so when you take the bus, I, there's three seats on one side. I always suggest that they take um, the seat next to one of the seats that um, can take and um, lift up. So if you can take and do it that way, if not, our new trains, the 7,000, which is coming back out, um, does give you access to, um, it's a wheelchair, um, a mobility device, stroller. It gives you access um, area that you can have your rollator there. Okay, thank you, Janae. That was it for the question. Okay. So um, in regards to the smart care card to help prevent loss, um, please keep it in your wallet. You can take and tap it while it's inside your wallet, but don't have two cards next to each other um, because it will read the full fare card. So if you have a PCA card, um, it would try to be both of them. Or some people, like I said, they have a card as a backup. Excuse me, they will, it will read the full fair card. So keep them separate. Don't bend them. There's a chip. When that chip is bent, um, it deactivates the card. So, and honestly, for this card, I wish I had one with me. If you take, and this is the target, all you had to do is just this, and it will still read the card. You don't have to do anything else, just keep it close enough without bending, touch the sides, and it will read the card, okay? That way it prevents breakage because like I said, there's a little chip that people don't know that's in there. Um, 
that will crack if, it's, if the card is bent. A lot of times people bend the card to, to touch it, but they don't have to. And you can keep it, um, keep it in your wallet. Um, so you can add money at the machines for your smart trip card, um, or you can do it at the bus, uh, on the bus. When you do it on the bus though, it will automatically take your fare. So if you took a new, uh, and it only does cash on the bus, um, but it will take automatically take away your fare when you do that. And when you use it, um, if you start an account online, you can see, take account of everything that's being done on your smart trip card, how much money um, you use, where you travel to, all that information in, is online for you um, if you start an account online. You can also um, do automatic reload online. So if you have a credit card or debit card that you want to add, um, you can do that. And it's for Metro Access too. They have a, um, a auto load too for their, for their smart trip cards. Um, but it, it does allow you to um, not worry about having cash, about somebody, um, you know, some crime does happen on Metro. So it, it does keep, it's a safety measure. So you can take that in mind. Um, when you are adding funds to your smart chip cards. These are the new fair gates. These fair gates are um, the reason why the cards that's not starting with 0167 no longer work. Um, the difference with this two is that I don't have a full picture, but you know, before you would go inside the station, you would get on, and all of our stations don't have them yet, but you go inside the station, you look, and it always it had either green or for you to go through or red for you not to enter on that, that um, fair gate. This one is different. They all green on each side. So if there's nobody coming into that particular fair gate, you can enter or exit um, from, from it. It's not limited any longer. So if it's just tap your card and go. So. That's a nice feature for it. But I want you to know that I reduce their smart trip cards and the Metro Access cards are not um, accessible on the smartphones. Um, I'm not sure when it's gonna happen or if it's gonna happen, but we're getting phone calls, people saying, well, I tried to load the, um, my smart trip card onto the, um, this, the application. It's, it's not included. Employee cards aren't included either. I tried, but I, I found out we can't do it. So, um, just to kind of give you that information because a lot of people don't know. Um, this right here is um, a Metro bus. As you can see, it's a P6 going to Anacostia. One thing I want you to look at, if you see um, some white numbers, it's kind of hard to see, but those white numbers are actually the bus operator ID card. So if a bus operator gives a hard time and don't provide the right service, you need to not only know that you were on the P6 going towards the Anacostia, the time of day, but if you give that um, ID number for the driver, they know the ex exactly what driver that was that provided that bad service. So please keep that in mind when when you have poor customer service. And even if you have good customer service, we, we'd appreciate that feedback too, okay? Oops. Sorry, that was my mistake. Okay. Okay, so, um, but that's basically what I wanted to tell you about that. Um, but also, also, um, if you can, I'm not sure if you can get to this link and it's fine if you can't. If you can go to next bus um, at Ramada, it's, um, do, I'll give you this in the notes if we need to. Um, it will give you all the information you need to know about um, when a bus is coming, if the bus is running late. Um, so next bus on Metro, and I have another screen to show you that gives you a little bit more detail. So, did you want? Did you want me to go to the website? No, no, not yet. Okay. okay. So when you take and you um, are paying to ride the bus, 
Um, you just tap your, your reduce fare smart chip on the ID on the um, fare box. This is going to automatically take um, take a dollar away unless it's an express bus, then it takes more. When you want to add fare, you just it is basically you press the add fare button on the left, you tap your smart chip card, you add your money, and you tap your smart chip card again, and it will take away the money, but it will also add the money that you put in. If you have any problems, if you lose your money, the bus operator is to give you a slip so um, smart trip can be contacted and for the money to be put on your card. Okay? Always make sure you get that. When you do take the bus, keep in mind that you have unlimited transfers to any agency that participates with us. Fairfax Connector is one of them. So if I got on a bus right now at 12.03, at, at, until 2.02, um, I can transfer an unlimited number of buses that I want as long as they are not express buses, okay? It, with no charge. Okay, we can do the next slide. So this is the bus ETA that I had just mentioned a, a second ago. Um, this gives you the real-time information. I'm not sure if you had difficulty, but if, if you want to try to do the link, if not, um, they get the slide and they can see that um, what the bus ETA is, because it gives detailed information. And this way, um, if your child has it or do you have it, you know you're running late, you know the bus is running late, you can inform a family member so they won't be concerned. Because it could be an accident on, on, um, on the road and it delays Metro. Um, and so that way to help you know keep the stress down of someone traveling, they would know. So the, with the real-time bus ETA, I know the number is blurry up top, but if we were to put that number in, it would give you all the information about that bus. It would show you on the map whether it was a delay, um, and um, you can do it that way, um, or you can take and you can call Metro um, at that phone number, but this is the quickest way. And then like the number on this one is 100, 2477. This is in um, this particular bus location is in Montgomery County, and it did give it does give detailed information. So just keep that in mind when you um, taking public transportation and be taking a bus, and there may be a delay. So especially if you have a child um, who takes the bus, um, let them know about this so that way they can say, "Hey, mom." Uh, you can call them and say what's going on, and they can say, "Hey, well, mom, I just looked at the application, and um, and um, the bus is running a little late, so I won't be there until so and so time." Next, next app, next. Um, so some of the agencies are allowing um, free rides. This is in Montgomery County and Prince George's County. If you decided to go visit Montgomery County, it was. Um, is Monday through Friday. Actually, I hear that until July 2022, you can ride um, the bus for free if you go inside Montgomery County. You couldn't be, sometimes they travel from um, Montgomery County to DC. It doesn't apply. Um, it's only in Montgomery County from July. You can board in Montgomery County from July 2022. You can ride for free. Prince George's County, there is no date. You can always ride the Prince George's County the bus um, at no cost. All you have to do is show your card, and this is for senior citizens and for the reduced fare um, ID card and for Metro Access um, Smart Trip ID. They do let you ride for free. Okay. Next. So we do offer free travel training. If you're interested, you can contact me. My email is G-I-O-C-A-S-I-O -S -S at Ramada. It's, I don't know why it's being blocked by this black um, strip, but um, that is my email. And since you get in this um, presentation, you will see my email address. So, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's my email. So if you're interested, just let me know. We, do, we haven't, um, we're not doing in-person, but I will try to put you on the schedule. So when we are doing it in person, I can work with you. And hopefully we'll be able to go back to group presentations. So the ARC said, oh, Janae, 
I have 15, um, um, 15 individuals with disabilities who want to learn. We will get a bus out. Um, we will get a bus out if Metro services that area. We get a bus out um, specifically for that training. Um, we also have for groups, we also have um, station managers that participate. And that's for safety because, you know, when you have a large group, it's better to have, you know, more work is there for safety reasons, um, but it is a good training. And when we do do groups, even individuals, it's good to have lunch money because it tends to be an all day thing. It's good to have lunch money and some other um, pieces of equipment, cell phone, make sure your cell phone is charged. Even if you're, you're, um, you or your child could have um, a battery pack, so their charger does go low, that they'd be able to charge their phone, go, battery goes low, they'd be able to charge their phone. That's something really handy to have. Um, summertime, a bottle of water, um, the correct clothing. I traveled with someone in the wintertime that wore shorts and it was freezing. Um, so I um, always have the right clothing and an extra um, maybe sweater just in case um, the weather does change. So just things like that is, is useful to have. Can we go to the next slide? I'm not sure if we would be able to, but I would really like for you to watch this video. Um, it's really a short video. And um, so can you try to get it for me, Diane, so they can watch uh -huh. it? And this is gonna tell you what to do in, in, in the case of a fire and smoke and in, in the emergency buttons. Um, but there's other times when you can press the emergency button. Say, for instance, in the summertime, if the car, if the rail car is too hot, okay, um, that means that the air conditioner in that particular car may be um, may not be working. You can press honestly the emergency button and tell the train operator that the car and the number is located on top of the emergency button. That that particular car is a hot car. What will happen is they will um, have maintenance because we have maintenance um, throughout the area. We have maintenance um, waiting to do repairs if necessary to a particular um, to a particular um, look at a particular location to come and do maintenance on those cars. Even if you if it's a person who was sick, I got on a train. A woman was sick and she had an accident on a train. That's another time when you would press that emergency button, not only for emergency personnel to come see about that person, but also if, if the, uh, the um, car needs to be cleaned, they will close that car down so people are, aren't around that contamination. They will close that car down and have it clean prior to allowing people to um, use that, that car again. Um, let's see. I think, um, Janae, I think that we should, uh, I will email the link out for the video because we're running over time right okay. now. Um, and so I want you to be able to finish your presentation and then if there's any more questions at the end. Is well, that okay? I'm, I'm basically finished the presentation, but if another thing, I, another tip that I would like to add in, in emergency situations, if a person is bullying you and you're on the bus, please tell the bus operator. And also, I also tell my students, please sit in the front of the bus. That way, because the bullies all tend to sit in the back. So the front of the bus is a good place to sit. And also, if you're on the, uh, on the rail car, if you see something, you want to say something, but you want to stay safe, you can easily go inside the elevator press the emergency button. You don't have to um, verbally say anything because the station managers, if you saw those cameras earlier, the station manager has to look down. So there's two emergency buttons at each end of the station. Um, you could press that and then walk away if, for safety reasons and they will look and they will say state your emergency but if they see that there's no one there, they have to look and they have to come and check and see what's going on. So I just wanted to provide you those additional safety tips. But please, for fire um, and smoke, 
um, if you wouldn't mind looking at the, um, the, the presentation, that would be appreciated. And that's how, so now I can answer any questions you may have. Yes, I will definitely send that link out. Does anybody have any additional questions? It was a lot of information. Thank you, Jenny. I hope it was useful. It's very useful. Does anyone any have any last questions? Like I, I mentioned earlier that I will email this recording out as well as the slides and then some of the specific links that we mentioned. Also, Junae mentioned um, some uh, website or not website, email addresses. I'll make sure that those are all included as well as um, Janae shared her cell phone. We'll include that as well. Yes, I, 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 my cell phone is for that purpose. If a customer has any questions, I, I would love for them to, you know, to be able to help them. I'm not going to give you the runaround. If I don't know the answer, I will find the answer for you and get back with you. Thank you, Janet. We appreciate that because people, families get the runaround a lot. So yeah. if you can make it simpler. We appreciate that. All right. Any other question? It doesn't. Lots of thank yous. And it was thank you for being so generous with your information. Um, oh, let me just look. I think there might be one more in the Q&A box. Oh, the I think you received the email address to send the application. Yes, that's I'll include that. That was one of the emails that she gave out. And it's on her slide, her email address is on the slides as well. Okay. All right. Well, Junae, thank you so much for your time today and sharing that great information. Um, and thank you all for participating. And if you have any questions, Junae, I will send out her email again, but feel free to reach out to her. As always, feel free to reach out to us at the ARC if we can ever provide you with any information on a whole range of topics. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. Stay safe. Thanks, Renee. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.